And if you could, I would like you to ask me questions about openings that affect you or that you have troubles with or that you would like to have a, a deeper understanding about. And uh, so we'll stay on openings and I'll turn it over to yourselves. Like, uh, which openings are any, any of you having trouble with? Right. Well, one of the, I'll just make it a little bit more myself. One of, the, one of the moves that was really annoying for me is when my opponent played d4 and I was black, I was playing Queen's Gambit accepted. And seriously, my record was great with the Queen's Gambit accepted. So a lot of my opponents were tricking me or attempting to trick me. They would play knight f3 on their first move. I was playing d5, hoping to get into my queen's gambit accepted routine. So what would happen, uh, my problem is I really wanted to play queen's gambit accepted. But my opponents would be very tricky. Uh, in this position, they wouldn't play e3. E, yeah, or D4. They wouldn't play E3, which would allow me to get into my comfort zone, which was this. I, so this is the kind of, let us call it the tabia position for the Queen's Gambit accepted. They wouldn't allow me to do this, and instead, after C4, pardon me, after takes, they would play Knight A3. So they would recapture the pawn on c4 in a different way, and I was thinking that I was equalizing here, but I had some very serious doubts after the move g3. I actually think that this position is just simply good for white, and uh, I didn't do very well when my opponents did this against me, so I had a problem with this particular move order, knight f3, d5. About 20-some years ago, I yeah, then. I had a guy play knight a3, I played bishop e6, and he took on c4, I played queen a4 check, I played b5, he was on. Ah! 1970, maybe? Yeah, 1970, so Ben, what? Nice, nice easy game. One of Ben's yeah. best uh, efforts, yeah, bishop, e6. bishop e6. My opponent was not deterred oh. by bishop e6, he took anyway. He took, Ben took, and the old, the old double attack routine was foiled. Ben, ben spotted the, the move b5, and yes, he won the game. Uh, so what happened in my particular case is when my opponents would, would try to trick me with their move order of knight f3, c, d5, c4, I learned to play this variation. And uh, this was played, I think, in... Alakine, Irva, and back in the 1930s, back in the day. And the main line for, for, for that time, this is what I learned as the main line for white and for black. And for some reason, this move or even knight d5 are very uh, annoying. And then after d3, they would play knight f6, bishop e3. Queen would go back, we're not 100% sure where. Let's just choose a square, d6, for example. And then either with bishop e2 or with d4, white got an easy advantage. Uh, black's development, again, isn't that harmonious, as queen on d6 is kind of, well, blocking the bishop on f8. But I discovered, I'm pretty sure it wasn't my discovery, I discovered that in this position, I had a really, really cool move which basically put the kibosh on this entire variation. Ben is aware of the move, knight h6. Knight h6. So that's like a weird offside move, but it starts to make sense. When bishop e2, I played g6, yes. As far as, yes. That was, that's the idea. So the whole idea from Black's point of view is to control the square d4. Let's go back for just one move. So imagine in this position, bishop e3. Let's put my queen not on the happiest square, but okay, I go back to d8. So I'm not 
I'm not, uh, I'm not encouraging knight e4. But really, now we start to see that the battle is shaping up for the square d4. If d4, my knight is coming here. If bishop e2, my, my bishop is coming onto this very nice diagonal. Bishop comes to g7. And I actually just like black's position. I'm not only comfortable, I'm more than comfortable. So my opponent stopped playing that. I'd like to share it. So I would say d3? d3? Knight h6. Bishop? E2. Okay, so what's the idea, Sam? G6 or knight e4? G6, let's just say. Bishop e3. Bishop e3. Queen backwards. G4. G4. G4 is new. Ooh, G4. Wow. So uh, the idea is you just want to corral my knight. So and then h3, g4. h3. And so then the idea is that this knight yeah. is a little, oops, I don't want to go backwards. I beg you. So after, for example, a move like f5, f5 yeah. so you, you could chase me back. It's not exactly purgatory. Yeah, exactly. D4. So it kind of looks a little King's Indianish. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but it's something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sir. Yes. Back at the beginning, what's wrong with just the bishop taking the knight on h6 and just opening that pawn? Exactly. A very, very good question. Seriously, that is. I mean, you know, you play a move like knight h6, maybe you're going to get punished. And so knight. Oops. Uh, Jesus, where's my, I, I pressed the wrong one, sorry. So knight h6 is the top. So how about taking it? New variation? Okay, so before you take it, one, th one consideration that comes to mind is your first kick the queen backwards. So now you kick the queen backwards, now you take it. Okay, so you get, so you get black's pawns doubled. And that's a key consideration, but as recompense, I do have the two bishops, and when the bishop does come to g7, it really controls this long diagonal, and it's, my feeling was it was more than adequate compensation. It's just a kind of a judgment call. It will take a lot of experience and practice to prove it. But oftentimes, and I get this experience from the French defense, I sometimes play knight h6, they take my knight, and it turns out that white's missing his dark square bishop, and he's got this very big hole in the middle of the board. I'll have a, I'll, uh, I had an experience recently at the U.S. Open. So I am in Vancouver, Washington, man, and I'm playing a low-rated player in the early parts of the tournament. Maybe it was game one, maybe it was game two, I, well, I'm not too sure. But in a sense, my, our rating gap was so great, I mean, if I don't win this game, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I think I, they take away 200 rating points, right? <laughs> Yeah, about that, maybe a closer to expert, yeah. But my opponent played e4. I would normally, playing Grandmaster, play Karo Khan or something mainline. I like also the Taimanov variation as black. Knight f3, e6, d4, cd. I've done a lot of work on this variation for black. And essentially, today, it's very, very topical. You see a lot of Grandmaster games playing uh, with the so-called Rio variation. Yeah. So this position happens to be a very, very topical position amongst top Grandmasters. And you see uh, players actually playing even both sides of it. So I played the move knight c6, and I absolutely despise the Sveshnikov. <laughs> I mean, I just... <laughs> I mean, it just curls my blood. So my opponent played a move that I found very annoying. 
Toit night B5. No, it's not Sveshnikov yet. So, uh, of course, he wants to occupy D6. He's discouraging Knight G E7. A goal. I didn't want to say. <laughs> I mean, talk about own goal, right? Knight G. So I played. Right now, if I get this position, guess what? We're right, root, right in the main line Svezhnikov, and I don't play this variation as black. I despise the position for both colors. <laughs> I mean, I don't want anything to do with this position. So I played what I thought was a very natural move in this position. After the move, knight b5, yeah, I played d6. So I, of course, am thinking that if it's my turn, I'm going to refute the move knight b5. I'm just going to play a6 and drive the knight away. My opponent played bishop e f4. And I got the very strange impression that I've been outfoxed in the opening. That darn guy. I mean, because if I play e5, let's say bishop e3, I could play a kind of a knight f6, but it's looking kind of Sveshnikov like to me. Even though maybe I have a good version, maybe I do, maybe I don't, I'm not sure, but. Did you play Sveshnikov? Never. Oh, I played Sveshnikov, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I could tell. With what? I, I, uh, about two years ago, I, I was in a tournament in Holland, an open tournament, and uh, I had played a massive number of junior players. Man, was I feeling old. You know, like these kids were just kids. They were Sam's age, for crying out loud. And in the last round, for first place, I played Sveshnikov, and I felt like the youngster. <laughs> it was like a great feeling. I was so happy to see Evgeny. I was like, welcome, welcome, welcome. So I didn't want to do this. So, I, so instead of the move e5, I played knight e5. And here I'm happy to say my opponent went into what we could call the tank, meaning deep thought. Okay, so the move knight e5 is a basically an in-your-face kind of move. The first thing we must note is that queen d4 is a fail. This simply fails because of Ben's move, queen a5 check. And this time the double uh, attack works. The double attack works. Black picks back his bishop on e5. Yep, so that's nice. So the first thing we realize is queen d4 is not the right move. Knight e4. So queen d4. So essentially in this position, what I'm saying to white is you went knight g1 to f3 to d4 to b5. You tracked all the way across the board. You provoked my knight to e5, which is actually a wonderful square. Thank you very much for, for doing that. And if you allow me, I'm going to play the move a7, a6, picking up a, a crucial tempo. And as my opponent was thinking, 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 um, I realized that there was one and only one move in this position that gives white any advantage. Can you guess what it might be? OK, after c4, you're a little bit worse. A little bit, just a little bit. So I will go a6. This is important. Do you want to go knight b5 to, to d4 or to c3? Yes. I recommend e3, bishop e3. What moment? After knight e5? After knight e5, You. Bishop e3, so if I play a6 and you go backwards, then essentially what I'm saying is that in this particular variation of the Sicilian, white has provoked my knight to e5, where I'm saying, I'm thanking you. That's actually a good square for my knight, and I'm getting a6 with tempo. 
So what Sam is trying to say is that with this move, he's trying to set up a Maroxi bind. So Sam, after a6, where would you like to go with the knight on b4? Yes, exactly. That was the question. Where did you want to go, to d4 or c3? So now we have... Uh, yeah, like... Correct. We, you lose a tempo. Yes, because not only does it matter, in fact, oops, I keep touching the, uh, uh, a favorite line of Spassky was to play a hedgehog where he went knight b8 to d7 to e5 to g6 voluntarily. And he got positions that were very good for black to Tempe behind. Two Tempe behind. So in this case, I'm very, very pleased to have the black position. So after knight e5, my opponent goes into a deep think, and he plays the wrong move. Let me just show you what my opponent played so we can understand for a moment what needs to be avoided. I played a6. Again, knight d4, he's in some main variations of tempo behind and the bishop's misplaced on f4, so he took, 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 castles, check, bishop d7, knight d6, and all of these moves were played after his long think relatively quickly. My opponent made a strange move here. What move did my opponent make? Uh, let's say he made move bishop e2. That's not so strange. Bishop c6. Now he made a strange move, sorry. Now he put bishop to d3. And after g5, I wanted it in a very easy way. My, I'm just going to make some bad moves for him so you can see how I won it. I did a very strange thing. I won it by doubling on the h file. It was I. You should have played king d1 and e1 after the g1. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what was he thinking? So it was like, okay, so what happened in this particular position? So once we got here, I was already feeling very good. I w let's say he didn't play the move bishop e2. Let's say he played the move f3. Or, or no, bishop e2 was fine. I apologize. Bishop e2 was fine. <laughs> Bishop e2, bishop c6, f3. Okay. So here we're going to just look at the variation, the position from the point of view of the pawn structure. Black obviously has five pawns on the center to the king side versus four. White has a majority on the queen side. So it's clear that my play, which is very, very simple and robust, is I want to use my majority. So let's say I play g5. Let's just say he doubles rooks on the open file, which is what all of the books basically say we should be doing. Well, if you notice, all of the business squares, oops, all of the business squares, meaning d6, the d6 square, the d7 square, and the d8 square are covered. You've got the d file and nothing else going for you. Your real problem is that your majority, a2, b2, c2, you're not using it. So black had a very easy game. I'm going to play g4, rook on a8 to g8, and white's ending up on the defensive. So this main line, uh, main variation, and most natural move actually ends up being a situation that is bad for white. So knight c3, bad move, a6, takes, takes, everything happened, and black ended up with the initiative. Or let's just simply say not just the initiative, but a superior position. So back to this position. Gentlemen, ladies, what should white play? What should white play? There's one and only one move in this position. Obviously, if I can play a6 and knight f6 and queen c7, I have a very, very comfortable position. Queen d4 is fails to a6. Captures the knight. 
capture the knight. That's transposes. That transposes into the game. Not good for black. Uh, not good for white to capture the knight and trade queens, as it turns out. Uncle. Say uncle. <laughs> Do I hear Uncle Sam? You have a suggestion for black for white, perhaps? A four. A four. Okay, A four is a reasonable move, but it really doesn't disturb me from getting a comfortable Sicilian yeah. position. But by the way, the move Bishop Knight B five and Bishop F four very well known. I'm sure it was well known even before Petrosi and Fisher from their candidates match of 1971, where uh, Bobby, Bobby, uh, 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 Petrosian was black, and in this moment, Petrosian played the move e5, Bobby played bishop e3, Petrosian played knight g5, Bobby played bishop g5, Bobby won a much worse position. He essentially, he essentially went to do a Sveshnikov a tempo behind and won. But that's not good. But how does that happen? If I wish to be to it's a silly idea from Bobby. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, knight e5. So, shall I show? Knight d2, very nice variation. But again, after a6, knight here, knight here, Essentially, black is again in a very comfortable Sicilian position where he's several tempi up and black's king is very solid, his center is very solid, he's got ideas like b5, b4. So again, I would find it more comfortable for me to play the black position in that case. No, that's just a bishop takes d6. So the move that I discovered at the board, which is very, very counterintuitive, and it's the only move for white to have an advantage, is this one. That's it. That's the only move. Everything else, correct. Everything else is... Yes. So, absolutely the same position as we saw before with one small difference. The knight's on a3 and not on c3. On c3, white's not using his majority. On a3, white is. So, for example, if black played a move like b7, b5, now we can talk about something here that's very, very important in chess that happens very, very often. One of the things that we've got to do is we've got to use our trumps, right? So from black's point of view, uh, my trumps are the majority over here. From white's point of view, his, majority, uh, his trumps are the majority over there. Now when I play the move b5, am I playing to my trump? No, certainly not. A move like g5 plays to my trump, but here there's a problem. The desirable g5 fails miserably to knight c4. Now my pawn on e5 is hanging. There are ideas that white may play with his knight to b6. So with his knight on a3, Sam said, how about the move b5? Now this changes a great deal over the game. First of all, one thing that white could do is play the move c4. And let's say we get a position like this. Now here we see a crucial difference. White already has a passed pawn. Maybe we like black's position. Maybe we like white's position. That's debatable. But another problem with the move b5 is let's say white plays c3. Now essentially with the move b5, I've created a bit of a weakness here. I've created a weak pawn. Oops, that wasn't what I wanted to do. The pawn on a6. The pawn on b5, phew, that wasn't what I wanted to do either, uh, is vulnerable because 
in my eyes, let's say I play a move like g5, new variation. And let's say I play a move like bishop e2. Let's say I play a move like g4, knight here. And I'm not exactly sure. Maybe we'll just throw these moves in just to give an, a, a taste of what is coming. So let's say I play the move rook here. And I don't know. I, I mean, in the game, what I did was so very easy that it was almost uh, too, too smooth a victory. Now, we almost got a position like this in the game. I actually kept my pawn back on h7 because I showed you I doubled on the h file. But here, again, White gives us a chance to use his majority. With his knight on c2, oops, that wasn't the move I wanted. I want to play the move a4. And we start seeing right away that there are counter chances for, for White. Uh, let me try to show one variation just as an exceptional. There was some variation I was looking that went like this, like this, this kind of a thing. And you can see uh, something has gone very wrong for, <laughs> for, 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 for black. He sacrificed exchanged, but he's facing moves like knight b8 and knight e5, so white is winning. So this was, I mean, just for your information, and again, for those of you who do play e4, this was a, a lesson for me that, you know, when you face a new idea, new, new situation, you have to start thinking outside of the box and start coming up with something creative because the move knight b1 to a3 would simply, it shouldn't be first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth on your list of candidate moves, but it was the only move to keep any edge for white. Yeah, well, exactly. And uh, in the game, as I said, in the game, the strangest thing was that the knight was actually. Which, with knight c3? Knight h3. Oh, pardon me. I certainly can. Let me just go back for. Oops. Yeah, knight e5. Knight a3. a6. Yes? Yes? Knight c4. Uh, oops, that's not knight c4. It's not even close. Okay, knight c4. Whoa, that move, new variation, had not occurred to me either before or after the game. <laughs> okay, so the idea is twofold. White has knight b6 ideas, attacking bishop, and other ideas, knight e5. Okay, so let's take a look at what I can do about both. So in one case, let's say I take, white would play this move. I would play this, rook d7, king here, bishop b5. And I don't think black is long for this world. Uh, this is not a happy situation. First of all, I think white can just white black out. Uh, how does white, what's, Ben, what's the killer move here? Yeah, I was thinking about Yeah, I, w w w I mean, the position is set, the table is beautifully set for checkmate. I'm just having a hard time <laughs> seeing more at the moment. I don't think black, this is very good for black. White could have just played rook takes b7 instead of bishop takes b5. And not give the rook. And what's the problem? Yeah. Right. Yeah, Bishop b5 just looks so, so we, c so we could probably reject, pardon me, uh, knight c4 looks great, just a second. So let's reject a takes b5. Well, let, let, let's see it again just because I love being contrarian. What did you do? Knight b6. So, so I'll play here. Bishop takes b5. Knight d7. Knight d7. Is that, that looks, 
Knight takes d7. That Look. Yeah, that is being timid. Okay, so we've got we've got uh, some very key supporters for White's Might's move. Uh, just a second. Pom poms. Knight c4 is a cool move. I, and again, I didn't consider it before, after, during. <laughs> Uh, how about just a funny move for a moment? Knight f6. Knight b6. Knight b6. Does it transpose? I was trying to do I something. Can always put down knight b6. Takes takes and takes on b7. Okay, now okay. This this is what you want to do. I was trying to try. I was hoping that in case you took my rook, not forced. I was hoping that I I would be able to uh, trap the knight. Uh, or maybe, you, oh, sorry, you, you you took. I could even take. No. No, no, no. Cancel. That is not a good move. <laughs> I would have to stop rook d7. That. Yeah, it's it's weird. It has the feeling, right? The feeling should be in our fingertips, and we should recognize that something went wrong. So let's just see what did I do? What? Uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, say it again. Bishop knight c six. knight f six, yes. Uh, knight takes e five. Knight takes e five. Yeah, it takes the five. Now that is a a, a kind of a transposition into. And you got e five. I sucked you before. I was sucking you to b six, and now you want a pawn. Uh, looks. Looks really good for white. So a takes b5, knight takes e5. So knight c4, not knight d6. And, and it looks like a very, very good uh, uh, intention. I know. It's like, you know, ah! My, my oh, man, I hate to suggest this one. But oh, please. King e7. Uh, sorry? King e7. King e7. Yeah, I don't resign yet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is it? And then suddenly the knight. Okay. But after the move, King e7. Oops. Solid. Oops. I mean, I hate arguing tactics with the I'm like, telling you, <laughs> baby. <laughs> you are in the. <laughs> you, you, you are in, you are in the wrong battle. Well, I don't see what this knight king is. Uh, yes. Yeah. True. Uh, knight b6. What about knight there? I'm not going to say. Oops. Oh, Man, I missed. That's the worst mouse slip ever. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, overwrite. Solid. Solid. Uh, Just like Yasser said, you got to get your pieces out of the center. Knight, knight d6. Okay. Can I play Ooh. knight c8 check? Uh, king is solid. Now the other knight. Uh, the other knight. So, so, so now I might lose these knights. Now your knights aren't as a... Uh, uh. Yeah, I got the two bishops. Yay! So. You didn't refute King E7 here. That's, that, that's, a good, that's a good sign. I didn't realize that my position was so drastic. Unless after King to E7, the bishop starting to take the knight. Correct. So maybe knight on B to D6 during knight F7? Oh, yeah, right, right. Okay. New, <laughs> new main line. And. Uh, oh, that was one of the classic, <laughs> classic moments uh, in our broadcasting, which is it's just really unforgettable. Is twelve-year-old Jeffrey uh, came out and you know was was very politely showing his, his uh, games, and Ben said, "Am I crazy, or can you just play this move?" And he said, "You're crazy." Instantly, you know, like just <laughs> blah, blah, and, and then he goes, "Duck, duck, 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 duck." This look, I must say, uh, at first sight, 
and second sight and third sight and fourth sight. Uh, it sure looks good for, 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 for white here. It sure does. I mean, I want it somehow trap the knights, but not only are they dancing, they're dancing and prancing and winning material. It's true. So, so just a second. I wonder if you have a move that's not a6 after knight a3 or you're just in trouble. Well, probably I knight on one to a3. Maybe I should play something silly like knight f6. Uh, because, uh, again, my opponent didn't play this. His, his uh, m move was knight c3. And, well, maybe. Still, I don't think knight c4, knight c4 here. Mm -hmm. Whoa, that is interesting, man. That's so, and this is what I do, by the way, when I, you know, encounter openings that I have trouble with. You know, I, I literally try to dig deep and an analyze these moves. So knight c4 here. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. I made it. Queen E2, Sam? What? Checkmate. I don't see a check ever. How am I made? No, you're not worried about mate. You didn't even just see the check. Yeah. Okay, so. I, I'm, I am worried, I must admit. I'll probably go for this. I'll do a Sarah Chong King F1 here. C3. C3? And let's get rid of that guy finally. Yeah, that's just me. I, it's, I, I just want to get rid of that knight on b5 because it's bothersome. Yes, that's legal. And you can keep my queen around a little bit, but I don't think of the. Uh, yes, indeed. Everybody's. A, it's a free for all. But. Uh, It looks like mate. Let's try it again because it worked so well last time. Well, now I can even take on D6. But that's not checkmate, thank uh, God. By, by, by the B4. way, can I make the Hakaru S move B4 instead of C3? Ooh. Can I do a Hakaru here? Uh, you, you pull a Hakaru on us? Yeah. If you watched every second of the broadcast, okay. No, but takes. Yeah, C3. Queen B2. Castle. I don't know. This now, this might be mate. <laughs> this, this might be mate. Uh, here, I would start calling emergency services. Uh, queen D4 is a fine move. Uh, let, 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 let's just toss it. A6, avoiding resignation. Avoiding resignation. And let's say, should, should white take this knight? I was thinking this, 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 this. Yeah, this is what I was thinking. He was thinking our bit. Maybe here. <laughs> Queen A5? Yay! Queen A5. Now you play something, and I can't take it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> but isn't that an amazing move? And I agree that knight c4 is really uh, quite something for, for white. It wasn't in my mind, but what was in my mind is, oh my gosh, how does white get an advantage? Knight a3, and working out those variations. Uh, openings for me are really, really wonderful challenges, and that's the way I look at them, as challenges. Mm -hmm.